fellow students, acolytes, and apprentices of the Force. I welcome you back to another Star Wars holocron. Today we will learn of an ancient Sith, Darth Malgus. This video will include many names and other characters. However, I will not delve into some of these other characters for time's sake. This is a long video, so get comfortable and grab a snack. Veradun was a Force-sensitive human male born in the year 3700 BBY on the planet Dromund Kaas, the capital of the reconstituted Sith Empire. Veradun was raised by an adoptive father, a biologist in the Imperial Science Bureau, and the man maintained a private zoo on a planet other than Dromund Kaas, with funding from the Empire where he collected and studied many different animals. As a child, Veradun tended to the creatures in the menagerie, feeding the animals and cleaning their cages. The young boy also participated in lessons on the Force with a number of instructors, all of whom recognized his great potential in the Force. Sometime in his youth, a female Twi'lek servant on the estate of Veradun's father committed a minor offense. Although the offense itself was meaningless to Veradun, he killed the woman to prove to himself that he was capable of doing so. His father was pleased with his son's actions and told the Sith Academy on the imperial capital world of Dromund Kaas of his accomplishment. Veradun was to leave the estate and train at the Academy to become a Sith warrior. The day before Veradun's departure, his adoptive father took him on a tour of the zoo to teach him three lessons on personal conduct, deception, and expectations. The lessons, which his father crafted through the use of the animals and their behavior, had a profound impact on Veradun and shaped his philosophies for later in life. The next day, Veradun was taken to Dromund Kaas, and he eventually became selected as an apprentice by the pure-blood Sith master Darth Vindican. On a trip to the Outer Rim world of Geonosis, Veradun discovered a young Twi'lek slave girl by the name of Elena Daru. Upon seeing that Daru was abused and physically beaten by her owner, Veradun killed her master and took the Twi'lek as his own. Although she remained his slave, the two became lovers, and he eventually came to treat her as a wife. Despite the Empire's anti-alien and anti-interspecies marriage policies, it was thus that after being accepted as a Sith apprentice, Veradun found a new name for himself, Malgus. In 3681 BBY, the Empire returned from hiding and launched a series of attacks against the Galactic Republic, sparking the Great Galactic War. Vindican and his student were among those selected to participate in the Sith assault to reclaim the Sith holy world of Korriban. And during the Battle of Korriban, the two took a Fury-class Imperial Interceptor to board the Republic space station above the planet. Landing in the hangar and preventing the station's crew from escaping aboard the freighter there, the two disembarked to confront the two Jedi who were entering the hangar. While Vindican engaged the Zabrak Jedi Master Kao Darak in battle, Malgus attacked Darak's Padawan Satil Shan. The Sith easily overpowered the younger human at first, but a toss of Darak's lightsaber put Malgus on the defensive and allowed Shan to regain her footing. Malgus's master responded by unleashing a blast of lightning at Malgus's opponent, but Darak again came to his student's rescue by blasting the warrior with the force, causing Vindican to change targets and attack the freighter nearby that belonged to a smuggler named Nico Okar. Okar was busy trying to start the ship so that he and the Jedi could escape, while a Republic trooper named Jace Malcolm defended the freighter from the Sith's attack by launching a rocket at him. Vindican easily deflected the rocket, but was enraged to see Darak order Shan to escape aboard the freighter. Angered that his opponent was escaping, Malgus engaged Darak alongside his master while the Zabrak battlemaster defended himself with both his and Shan's weapons. Despite the Sith's advantage of numbers, Darach easily beat back their attacks and scored a hit on Vindican's face before stabbing the Sith Master through his chest. Despite the fall of Malgus's master, the younger Sith summoned his master's double-bladed lightsaber to his hand and charged Darach, batting aside the chunks of machinery and metal that the Jedi threw at him. 
knocking Shan's saber staff from Darak's grasp and battering down the Zabrak's defences, Malgus brought the duel to a close when he cut down the Jedi Master. Malgus was surprised to find that his master was still alive and mocked Vindican for his failure to prevent the survivor's escape before decapitating the pure-blood Sith as they watched the Sith Armada descend on Korriban. After the battle, Malgus walked alone on Korriban's surface and experienced a force vision in which the galaxy and the Republic burned. From then on, Malgus believed that he would be responsible for the fall of the Republic and its Jedi Order. In the years following the Battle of Korriban, Malgus was promoted to the rank of Sith Lord, and around 36 and 67 BBY, he was granted the title of Darth. Taking on the full name Darth Malgus, he was selected to personally lead Imperial forces in a surprise attack on the peaceful planet of Alderaan in the Core Worlds. Timing his attack to coincide with an Imperial feint to draw the Republic fleet far from the Core, Malgus landed thousands of assault droids and Imperial troopers, accompanied by hundreds of Sith on Alderaan's surface, after the Empire completed a vicious orbital bombardment. Malgus himself led the Imperials on a march across the planet, burning forests and destroying cities on a trek towards the capital city. However, members of Havoc Squad, a unit from the Republic Special Forces, launched a guerrilla counterattack as the Sith Lord marched through a valley. Commander Jace Malcolm, the same trooper who Malgus had encountered 14 years earlier at Korriban, led his troops against the Imperials, prompting Malgus to defend himself against several Republic soldiers. Seeing the Sith Lord butchering his soldiers, Malcolm launched several rockets toward the Sith Lord. Malgus was able to protect himself against the explosions, though they scarred his face, and the Sith unleashed a blast of lightning to subdue Malcolm when the trooper rushed him. At Malgus's command, three Sith prepared to execute Malcolm, but the arrival of Satil Shan, now a Jedi Knight, saved the soldier from death. As she landed behind her friend, Shan unleashed a force blast that sent the three Sith flying and drew Malgus's attention. The two enemies began to duel, with Malgus driving Shan to her knees with his powerful blows, but Shan brought a nearby tree crashing to the ground between them in order to force the Sith Lord back. As their duel continued, Malgus was able to cut Shan's new saber staff in half, forcing her to block Malgus's lightsaber blade with her bare hands by absorbing the weapon's energy. Malgus was interrupted when Malcolm tackled the Sith Lord, wrestling with him before revealing that he was holding a grenade in his hand. The resulting explosion threw Malcolm backwards, while Malgus was able to withstand the blast despite scarring to his face. Shan then chose this moment to blast Malgus with the Force, throwing him into a nearby cliffside and then unleashing a second, more powerful blast that brought down the entire cliff on top of him. The Sith forces were on retreat as reinforcements arrived from the Republic in the system to help the battered Republic defenders. Shan played a vital role in giving hope to the overwhelmed Republic forces on the ground. Malgus survived the encounter and was picked up by his personal shuttle. Frustrated and enraged by the defeat, he paid little attention to his wounds. His breathing sounded like a rasp over wood. His skin stung from burns. His lungs were damaged. Lacerations and contusions made a grim mosaic on his flesh. However, Malgus felt no pain. As he departed Alderaan, Malgus sensed the presence of a Jedi within a ruined city on the planet. Desiring revenge against those who had deprived him of victory, Malgus ordered his shuttle's pilot to turn the craft around and hover over the city. Against the protests of the pilot, Malgus leaped from the craft to confront the Jedi within the city's ruined streets. Upon reaching the ground, the Sith called upon the Jedi. A Zabrak Jedi came out from one of the buildings and recognized him, igniting his two lightsabers in the process to face him, making his familiarity with Jarkai lightsaber combat style apparent. Malgus rushed towards the Zabrak Jedi to engage him, but was caught off guard when his opponent used the force to bring down two buildings, made of duracrete and steel, from the either side of the street on the Sith Lord in an attempt to kill him. Malgus was trapped under a mountain of rubble, 
and used the force to prevent himself from getting crushed. Dust made his already troubled breath more difficult. Malgus was so lost in his thirst for revenge that he failed to properly evaluate the power of his new Jedi opponent. With an effort of will, he contained his anger, controlled it, and made it into a tool to sharpen his power. Using the force, he blew tons of rubble up and away from him. It fell with a crash on adjacent buildings. Malgus jumped over the heap and landed on the street. The Zabrak Jedi was stunned. Malgus again charged towards his opponent and engaged him in a fierce lightsaber duel. Malgus unleashed a blizzard of lightsaber strikes, which prevented the Zabrak Jedi to perform any counterattack. The Jedi retreated before the offensive, desperately intercepting Malgus's blows. Malgus's lightsaber traced glittering red arcs through the air, and he continued to push towards the Jedi. His opponent continued to give space. Malgus soon realized that the Zabrak Jedi was actually baiting him. Malgus augmented his Force Sense and felt a faint sign of the presence of another Jedi nearby. This Jedi was hiding in the ruins and was using the Force to suppress his signature. Malgus unleashed a barrage of overpowering strikes on the Zabrak Jedi and performed a Force-augmented spinning sidekick to knock him out of the way. He then Force-gripped the second Jedi, pulled him out of the hiding and crushed his windpipe. The murder of the second Jedi enraged the Zabrak Jedi and he charged towards Malgus. However, the Sith Lord unleashed a powerful barrage of Force Lightning, which overwhelmed the defenses of his opponent and began to burn his flesh. But the Jedi staggered towards Malgus, slowly under the cover of his lightsabers, taking one step at a time regardless of his burns. Malgus channeled more power and forced the Jedi to his knees, who screamed with pain. Malgus's lightning spiraled around the Jedi, blasting dark holes in his body, and his lightsabers fell on the ground. The Zabrak Jedi was ruined by his attack, but was still alive. The Sith Lord took a moment to observe the look of failure in the Jedi's eyes, and then impaled him. He remembered his third and final lesson from his foster father. Sometimes there was just an empty cage while rejoining his forces in retreat. Following the battle on Alderaan, Malgus was nursed back to health by Daru, but jaw wounds he received during the battle forced him to don a respirator mask that covered his nose, mouth, and neck. During the latter stages of the war, Malgus led a campaign against the Republic in the Outer Rim, and he kept a record of his experiences inside a personal journal. 129 days into his campaign, Malgus's forces attacked the planet Ord Radama, and Malgus and the Sith Lord Darth Venomal supervised the landing of Sith forces on the world. Malgus and Venomal then led a group of Sith infantry in an assault on a Republic gun emplacement that was located at the base of a cliff. While Venomal and a group of commandos disabled the guns, Malgus led his remaining troops along a mountain pass, and he used the force to roll a large boulder along the trail, to detonate a number of mines that lay in their way. Once he had reached the crest of the mountain, Malgus rejoined Venomal's team, and he congratulated the commandos after he learned that they had taken out a Republic stronghold. More Sith troops landed on Radama, and a few days later, Malgus gathered together his soldiers and gave them a speech to raise their spirits in preparation for an attack on Livian Magnus, the capital city of Ord Radama. Malgus's forces besieged Livian Magnus, attempting to starve the city's inhabitants. A week into their attack, Lord Adras, a rival of Malgus, was sent to Ord Radama by the Emperor's advisory Dark Council to provide Malgus with assistance. Malgus was angered by Adras's presence on the planet, and when Adras suggested that they send some Mark I and Mark II Sith war droids to clear a path to the city, Malgus and Venomal did nothing to dissuade him, despite doubting the droids' abilities. Under Adras's orders, the droids attacked the city's southern gate, and Malgus watched on as the droids were exterminated by the Republic defenders. However, the failure of the droids sufficiently distracted the Republic forces to allow Venomal and his commandos to enter the city and blast a hole in the wall. Livian Magnus quickly fell to Malgus's troops 
and Adras subsequently tried to take all of the credit for the victory, which led Malgus to further despise his rival. Despite their initial success, Malgus's forces were not resupplied, and Malgus feared the Sith would lose control of Ordradama. While the Ministry of Logistics was responsible for providing Malgus troops with supplies, Malgus lacked sufficient influence over Minister Shulis Kamar, the leader of the ministry, to compel her to help him, and instead he sent some requests for resources to War Minister Sharis. However, Sharis did not respond, and Kamar failed to send Malgus any supplies, and the Republic eventually sent a number of Hammerhead-class cruisers and Thranta-class corvettes to attack Malgus's ships in orbit of Ord Radama. From the balcony of a palace in Livian Magnus, Malgus observed as Republic ships engaged his fleet, so he boarded his personal shuttle and flew up to assume command of the dreadnought Lindworm. However, by the time Malgus arrived on the Lindworm's bridge, the Sith had already lost the battle, and he watched as a stricken Sith Harrower-class dreadnought plummeted into the atmosphere of Ord Radama and crashed into the center of Livian Magnus. Through the Force, Malgus felt the deaths of Venomal and a hundred thousand of the city's inhabitants, and he screamed out in anger. The power of his scream buckled the bridge's viewport, caused the crew's ears to bleed, and also destroyed a wave of Republic Oryk-class tactical strike fighters that were passing the vessel. Realizing that the Sith had no hope of defeating the Republic ships, Malgus ordered his remaining forces to depart the system and jump to the heart of Sith space. After his withdrawal to Sith space, Malgus' forces were pursued by the Republic, and a Republic fleet attacked the Sith world of Ziost. Malgus participated in the battle, and the Sith failed to halt the advance of the Republic, which soon launched a strike against the planet Ashus Re. Malgus was dispatched to help defend Ashus Re, and once he arrived on the world, he took command of a line of siege tanks, and used them to hold off a series of attacks from Republic vehicles. The Sith forces were eventually victorious on Asher's Re, and in recognition of the role that Malgus played in the battle, the Dark Council informed him that he would never again have to face shortage of resources like he had at Ord Radama. A number of rumors circulated that claimed that some among the Sith blamed Malgus for the death of Darth Venomal, and when the Sith Emperor ordered Malgus to recapture Ord Radama, Malgus believed that the attack would give him an opportunity to restore his honor. Leaving nothing to chance, Malgus planned to lead a regiment of Sith warriors in an assault on New Rido, Ord Radama's new capital city, with droids, troopers and commandos to join him once he had breached the city's defenses. The battle waged on for a number of weeks, and Malgus suffered a number of setbacks as a result of the actions of the Jedi. However, he reveled in the bloodbath of the battle, despite the fact that the slow pace of the assault cost him his favor with the Dark Council. He remained certain that he would achieve victory on the world, and that his triumph would earn him a place in the Sith army that was gathering to attack the Republic's capital world of Coruscant. Malgus also suspected that the power source of the Dark Reaper, a superweapon used during the Great Sith War, was located on Ord Radama. Malgus later began to assemble a task force in preparation for an assault on Republic-controlled space in the Core Worlds, and the Dark Council placed at his disposal four Harrower battlecruisers and 48 Fury-class Imperial interceptors. In 3653 BBY, 28 years after the war's beginning, the Dark Council contacted the Republic Senate, expressing their wish to negotiate an end to the conflict. While delegations from the Empire, the Senate, and the Jedi Order prepared to meet on Alderaan to form a peace agreement, the Sith made preparations for their strike on Coruscant. The high-ranking Sith Lord Darth Angrel was placed in charge of the entire operation, while Darth Malgus was chosen to lead an early attack on the Temple of the Jedi Order. Under the impression that the Empire would invade Coruscant and proceed to wipe it clean of life via orbital bombardment, Malgus eagerly accepted the responsibility, believing it to be the fruition of his vision on Korriban that foretold his destruction of the Republic. Malgus's attack plan involved him entering the Temple, 
wherein he would distract the Jedi, while a force of fifty Sith warriors infiltrated the ancient edifice and destroyed the planetary defense grid mainframe within. Although Malgus requested that he be the preliminary attack's sole leader, Angral insisted that Malgus' rival, Lord Adras, a political ally of Angral's, act as the second-in-command by overseeing the 50-man infiltration team. In the months leading up to the attack, Malgus and his team diligently practiced and planned for their mission, and the Sith Lord personally viewed computerized models of the assault thousands of times. When the negotiating parties began their peace summit on Alderaan, the Sith's plan was set in motion. Malgus, accompanied by Alina Daru, arrived on Coruscant and proceeded on foot to the Jedi Temple, passing through crowded plazas filled with Coruscanti citizens unaware of the impending attack. The two used the opportunity to discuss their views on both their life of battle and the Force, sharing a passionate kiss on the way. Before reaching the Jedi Temple, Malgus received a confirmation from the Mandalorian bounty hunter Shea Vizsla that Coruscant's defensive grid had been disabled in preparation for the Sith assault. A squad of temple security guards attempted to stop his advance, and Malgus advised Daru to not interfere before he quickly dispatched the group. Vizsla, observing the sight from a recess in the face of the temple, took this as her cue and infiltrated the temple via a maintenance hatch as her colleagues strode in through the main entrance. Six Jedi Knights dropped from the balconies to confront the strangers, and Jedi Master Venzalo joined them. As one, the seven Jedi moved towards Malgus and Elena. The chrono on Malgus's wrist began to beep, indicating the approach of a hijacked NR2 Republic dropship towards the Jedi Temple. The beep panicked the Jedi Knights inside. They ignited their lightsabers, backed off a step, and assumed a fighting stance. However, Zalo held his ground before Malgus. Malgus credited him for it and inclined his head in a show of respect. The dropship finally breached the Jedi Temple's main entrance, skidded along the temple floor, gouging stone, trailing fire, toppling columns, collapsing balconies, and crushing victims beneath it. However, Malgus and Zalo remained motionless until it came to a halt directly behind them, the craft's hatch blew open to reveal Lord Adras and the team of fifty Sith warriors who proceeded to ignite their lightsabers. At that moment, Malgus recalled his vision on Korriban, smiled and activated his lightsaber. The reinforcements joined Malgus, Daru and the bounty hunter Vizsla in attacking the Jedi and their security forces. Zalo and his knights leapt twenty meters backwards where several other Jedi rallied behind them. At that moment, Adras and his Sith warriors charged towards the Jedi. Some Republic troops arrived at the scene and joined the Jedi in their struggle against the Sith. Batting aside their blaster fire, Malgus was in pursuit of Zalo, but was yet to meet him. His next target was a Jedi whom he struck down after a brief duel. Another Jedi, a Zabrak female, then caught his attention who was attempting to get close to Daru and kill her. Daru's skills were useless against this opponent, therefore Malgus intervened. He drew on the Force, and with a Force push drove the Jedi across the hall and into one of the towering columns of stone, where she collapsed, blood leaking from her nose. The battle seemed to have turned more chaotic by this time. Adra suddenly leapt into the middle of a squad of Republic soldiers and punctuated his landing with an explosion of Force energy that cast the soldiers away like dry leaves. Malgus then unleashed a blast of Force Lightning which engulfed two Padawans and one Jedi Knight simultaneously, killed them, and badly burned their bodies. Adras and Malgus exchanged a mocking salute after these two impressive feats. Daru traded fire with another bunch of Republic troops, which caught Malgus's attention. Before he could intervene, Vizsla fired two rockets at the troops and killed them. She then hovered above another group of troops with her jetpacks and used her flamethrower to kill them. Malgus now realized that the tide of the battle has turned in the favor of his forces. He again attempted to locate Zalo but got swarmed by three more Jedi, one male, one female, and one Togruta female. He used his dueling abilities in conjunction with acrobatics to outwit them. 
The female went down to him first, whom Malgus knocked out by slamming her on the floor with his force-enhanced strength. He then jumped behind the Togruta female, countered her lightsaber strikes, and drove her across the lying rubble with a force push. Finally, he dodged a lightsaber strike of the male, grabbed him by his throat, lifted him up in the air, and suffocated him. Malgus was now more enraged than ever before. He finally spotted Zalo, an opponent he considered to be worthy among all he has fought in a day. Zalo's dueling abilities were impressive, and he cut down two Sith warriors quickly while Malgus watched him. At that moment, Adras landed right behind Zalo and attempted to kill him. Zalo dodged his attacks and sent him skidding across the whole backside with a force push. Malgus then charged towards Zalo and caught attention of both Daru and Zalo in the process. Daru opened fire on Zalo to help Malgus. Zalo, without even looking at Daru, deflected her bolts with his lightsaber and sent them back at her. Two struck her, and as she collapsed, Zalo used a blast of power to drive her body against a column. Malgus stopped for a moment and looked at Daru. His anger overcame him. He let his anger loose and power went with it, shattering a nearby column and sending a rain of stone shards through the room. He focused his attention on Zalo again, his rage and power surging before him in a palpable wave. At this moment, another Jedi confronted Malgus. The Sith Lord, without even focusing on him, simply extended a hand, pushed through the Jedi's defenses, and choked him to death, tossing his body aside as he charged towards Zalo. The Jedi Master also went for Malgus. A Sith warrior confronted Zalo at this juncture, but was cut down by him. Malgus and Zalo finally came face to face and halted, studying each other for a moment. A Jedi Knight interrupted Malgus by attempting to stab him. Malgus dodged and punched the Jedi, knocking him off balance. He then landed a killer blow on the Jedi, but Zalo intercepted his blade. The two locked eyes and began exchanging blows for a brief moment. Malgus performed a force-augmented kick on the chest of Zalo, which sent him flying backward about ten meters. Zalo landed on his feet but near two more Sith warriors. They attacked him, but he cut them both down with impressive speed. Malgus then threw his lightsaber at Zalo, guiding its trajectory with the Force. However, Zalo leaped into air above it in an attempt to dodge the attack. While Zalo was still in the air, Malgus unleashed a blast of energy that caught the Jedi unprepared and sent him crashing downward into a pile of rubble. He lay there, prone. Malgus then jumped twenty meters high into the air towards the position of Zalo, recalling his lightsaber in the process took a reverse two-handed grip and prepared to pin Zalo to the temple floor. But Zalo rolled out of the way at the last moment, and Malgus's blade sank to the hilt in the stone of the temple's floor. He leapt up and over Malgus, landed in a crouch, reactivated his lightsaber, and pelted across the floor back at Malgus. Eschewing speed and grace for power, Zalo unleashed an impressive barrage of lightsaber strikes. Malgus countered his moves, but was unable to find an opening. Zalo managed to slam the hilt of his saber into the side of Malgus's jaw, inflicting a minor wound on his adversary. Seeing an opening, Zalo stepped forward and aimed for Malgus's throat. However, Malgus was ready. He turned his blade vertical to parry the blow and spun out of the blade lock. Reversing his lightsaber during the spin, he rode it into a stab that pierced Zalo's abdomen. Zalo's expression fell as he hung there, impaled by the lightsaber of his opponent. In his eyes, Malgus saw the flames of the burning temple reflected and the approach of Imperial naval forces. The sacking of Coruscant had begun, and while Sith forces led by Darth Angrel took control of the Senate building and killed the Republic's Supreme Chancellor Barukan, the Sith Armada had begun their bombardment of the capital on the command of Adras who had bypassed Malgus to issue the order. Within the temple, Malgus basked in the destruction, congratulating the surviving Sith before tending to Daru. He had Adras send for a medical team from the Imperial Medical Transport Steadfast before dismissing him for his insubordination in ordering the bombardment. Malgus watched from the temple's ruined entrance as Imperial bombers brought destruction to the city planet, 
taking the opportunity to contact Darth Angrel aboard the battlecruiser Darkness and inform him of the battle. When the medical team arrived, Malgus ordered them to care for the wounded, Daru included. Despite her initial protests about leaving Malgus's side, the Twi'lek went with the medics to the Steadfast in orbit when the Sith Lord informed her that he would travel to the medical ship once he was finished on Coruscant. Adras approached Malgus and questioned him on the fate of the Jedi's bodies. As Malgus believed that they had fought honorably, he decided to make the temple their final resting place, using the remaining explosives in the dropship to destroy the structure. As the remaining Sith joined Malgus twenty meters away from the temple, he took in all the building's features before activating the detonator. The ancient symbol of the Jedi Order fell in on itself, spewing debris in every direction. Malgus and the others created a wall of force energy that shielded them from the destruction, allowing them to watch the entire process in safety as they cheered. As the battle across Coruscant continued to rage, Malgus's warriors returned to their orbiting warships. The Sith Lord chose to remain at the ruins of the Jedi Temple so that he could watch the orbital bombardment firsthand. After waiting for several hours and witnessing a gradual reduction of Imperial forces, Malgus contacted the Darkness's captain, Jard, demanding to know why the orbital bombardment had not yet commenced. The captain revealed to Darth Malgus that Lord Angral had ordered the Empire's forces to shift into occupational procedures as the negotiations on Alderaan were continuing. Enraged, Malgus quickly travelled to the Senate building, where Angral had commandeered the offices of the Republic's Supreme Chancellor, who was killed during the initial invasion. While en route, Darth Malgus learned that the Sith leaders had chosen to use the occupied Coruscant as political leverage in the negotiations instead of outright destroying the planet. In the Sith Lord's eyes, this directly contradicted both his purpose and the purpose of the Empire, and prevented his vision of destroying the Republic from coming to fruition. Upon arrival at the Senate, Malgus was escorted to the Chancellor's office by Captain Run Neal. Within, he quickly began to question the change of plans in an emotional outburst before his superior. Unknown to Malgus, Adras had beaten him to Angral's command post, and the inferior lord's presence made the meeting into a major embarrassment for Malgus. The angered Sith was unpracticed in imperial politics, unlike his two contemporaries, who hoped to use Darth Malgus's love for Elena Daru and disapproval of the Emperor's policies as political leverage against him. As their tense conversation progressed, Adras revealed that he had refused Daru treatment aboard the Steadfast, and instead redirected her to one of the civilian hospitals on Coruscant's surface. Upon hearing his rival call Daru a mongrel, Malgus drew his lightsaber and crossed blades with Adras's own. Angrel ended the fight and sent Malgus away to find his lover, but kept Adras in his offices in a clear showing of where his favor lay. Darth Malgus was provided with the location of Daru's hospital and travelled there immediately to collect his lover. The facility was overwhelmed by victims of the Sith attack and had become so inundated that doctors, nurses and the wounded spilled over onto the hospital's roof and the street outside. Malgus's shuttle set down in the middle of the street, where he was met by an irate mob of Coruscanti. As the citizens jeered and heckled the Sith Lord, one of the individuals in the crowd threw a chunk of duracrete at Malgus. Although he was able to crush the rock with the Force, Malgus was still enraged by the act and demanded to know who threw it. When no one came forward, the Sith Lord attempted to disperse the crowd, but instead received only pleas for assistance. In response, he emitted a wave of force power that pushed everyone in his vicinity away from him violently, resulting in more injuries and destruction. The path cleared, Malgus entered the hospital and demanded that a nurse direct him to Daru. Upon finding his lover, Malgus removed her from the hospital and carried her back to his transport. While they travelled up to the Valor in orbit, the Sith Lord contemplated Angral and Adras's intent to use Daru against him, and found difficulty in reconciling his love for the Twi'lek with his duty as a Sith. He was eventually contacted by Darth Angral, 
who ordered him to remain in orbit aboard the Valor in order to oversee the blockade fleet. Although Malgus saw the job as menial, he complied and remained on the bridge of his cruiser while Adras and Angral handled matters on the surface. The day after the invasion of Coruscant, the fleet intercepted a Dragonfly-class dropship bound for the planet. The owner, bounty hunter Vrath Caesar, informed Captain Jard that he was in possession of information that would be valuable to the commander of the blockade. Darth Malgus eventually consented to meet with the man, who informed the Sith that a smuggler would soon try to run the Imperial blockade with a Jedi Knight in tow. Although Malgus was skeptical of Zizor's claims, he raised the Valor's alert levels and intensified the scans of incoming Imperial Supply Superfreighter convoys. When an anomaly was detected within one of the incoming convoys, Malgus dispatched a flight of Imperial shuttles to conduct visual searches of the freighter's hulls. Upon discovering an excess stock light freighter attached to the aft section of the Super Freighter Dromo, the shuttles moved to destroy the craft, but were prevented from doing so when the intruder remained close to the Super Freighter. In an attempt to draw the excess light freighter out from cover, Darth Malgus ordered that the convoy disperse so that the Valor could get a clear shot. During the commotion, Malgus was contacted by Darth Angrel, but put off answering the communication until he was finished with the Spice Runner. Malgus instead hailed the intruding freighter and ordered the pilot to power down or be destroyed. When the smuggler, Zirid Kor, refused, Malgus returned to Angral's communication. The superior Sith Lord informed him that the Imperial delegation on Alderaan had received information from their Jedi contemporaries. A Jedi woman by the name of Aaron Lanier had apparently left the negotiations without permission and so was in danger of disrupting the imminent peace. The leader of the Jedi delegation, Master Darnala, indicated to the Sith that Lanier's actions were not to be attributed to either the Order or the Republic, and that she was to be treated as an independent hostile agent. Following the signing of the Treaty of Coruscant, which officially ended the war, Malgus distanced himself from the power games being played by various Sith vying for a seat on the Empire's governing Dark Council. Instead, Malgus led Sith forces into the unknown regions expanding the Empire's control into the largely unexplored territories. Though a fierce fighter, he stood out as an oddity among the Sith of his day, often employing mercenaries of various alien species thought by the Empire to be deceitful and disloyal. Malgus learned many languages as a result. He also commissioned to the Dark Council's member Darth Mekis a superweapon, the Emperor's Shadow. Malgus was responsible for ordering many operations during the Cold War, such as those involving the Hammer Station, and more notably, claiming the Foundry and defeating its master, Revan. Following the presumed death of the Sith Emperor on Dromund Kaas, Darth Aho invaded Ilum as retaliation, but his striving was thwarted by Darth Malgus, who helped the Republic to defeat him in order to see his rival cast aside, including aiding in the rescue of Supreme Commander Rans. After Aho was defeated by the Republic, Malgus took his seat on the Dark Council and took over Aho's position as head of the sphere of military offense. With the role, he also served as a military consultant, observing Imperial attempts to secure Adagon crystals to create an invincible stealth armada. Before and while he was on the Dark Council, Malgus advocated the need for alien alliances and reforms in the Empire, ideals that were rejected by staunch traditionalists like Grand Moff Ilian Regus. Unbeknownst to others, Malgus used his position on the Dark Council to seize control of Darth Aho's resources, including using the crystals to create a stealth armada, allowing him to go ahead with his future plans. Once Malgus had the crystals, he delivered a powerful speech announcing the new empire and declared himself the new emperor, which would be free of the infighting of the Dark Council, powered through alien alliances and tolerance. In a message to the empire he defected from, he explained that he used the Foundry's power to create a droid army, similar to Revan's, but much more powerful. His new, true empire would purify the galaxy through unrelenting warfare.
Believing that many others shared his views about the state of the empire, Malgus invited any and all members of the current empire to join his movement. In a short time, Malgus had established a loyal army of droids, mercenaries, soldiers, and Sith of a wide variety of species. With this fledgling rebellion, Malgus planned to win minor victories to test its strength, while waiting for an ideal time to strike at the galaxy and defeat both the Republic and the Empire. Eventually, Malgus formed many alliances with powerful alien factions like the Schism Collective. Malgus led his new empire to a number of early victories, capturing many areas in the unknown regions. But the greatest opportunity for the fledgling empire came when rumor spread that the Sith Emperor had been slain by a Jedi Knight. Unbeknownst to all but a few, it had in fact been only the Emperor's voice that had been slain, but it was Malgus' best opportunity to unite the Sith under his leadership. Several other Sith that were waiting for the right time also joined him, leaving the Empire with the rumoured death of the Sith Emperor. Malgus gained the allegiance of Darth Serevan, who became one of his closest allies. Malgus accumulated many more loyal Sith, mercenaries and the droids loyal to those in this time. Many believed the Sith Empire was falling apart and in utter disrepair. The Collective, in return to Malgus's gifts, decided to repay his empire with valuable scientific achievements such as incorporating the technology of the ancient foundry into the captured space station. They also augmented the weaponry used by Malgus's forces with Rakata devices and perfected the production of Malgus's stealth fleet. He sent his ally, Darth Serevin, to Ilum in order to fulfill the invasion began by Darth Aho. But Serevin was defeated, and the strike team secured a stealth command ship from the invading fleet and flew it to the coordinates of Darth Malgus's hidden stealth space station. Cornered in his throne room, Malgus activated the station's self-destruct sequence to destroy the fleets assaulting it, before dueling the strike team sent to face him. But for all that he was a brutal and skilled fighter, Malgus's resolve weakened as the battle went on. Taking advantage of this, his attackers were able to use pulse grenades, force powers, and other means to force him over the edge of the platform and down the reactor shaft to his supposed death. Despite the failure of his attempted coup, Darth Malgus managed to survive the explosion of the Emperor's fortress, faking his supposed death above Elum. Hidden from the public, many rumors about Malgus's survival were shared in the Empire, including one that speculated that Malgus was frozen in carbonite by the Eternal Empire. Others claimed that Darth Asena managed to find him on the debris of the station and rebuild him with enhanced cybernetics and used him as an enforcer to take control of the Sith Empire. Some speculated that he had become the Third Empire's wrath. Due to his attempted coup, Empress Asina had Malgus kept on a tight leash, and because of that, acted as the new unofficial Empire's wrath. Malgus returned to the public in a supply drop on a shuttle to Ossus. Darth Melora noticed the supply drop and requested that it must not be opened because it could have been sent from a rival in order to undermine her operation. However, the supply drop opened by itself, and Malgus revealed himself to Melora, the Alliance commander, Major Anri, and the others present. Being shocked of his survival, Melora then attempted to attack him, but was force pushed away by the Sith Lord, falling off the ledge into the depths of below. The Sith Lord then took command of the invasion from Melora, and launched an attack on the Jedi colony, where Jedi Master Nos Dural was located. Melora, however, survived the fall and came back to see the Alliance commander and Major Henri, revealing her thoughts that the Empress may have Malgus on a leash, but wasn't the only one who could pull it. Eventually, Malgus' survival became public for the rest of the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic after the invasion of the planet. Unknown to the Empire and Republic, Malgus secretly stole a tome from the Jedi Library on Ossus prior to departing to Dromund Kaas. After the invasion of Ossus, Darth Malgus took command of an operation on Dantween, 
Malgus saw Dantooine as an immediate threat due to its location at the edge of Imperial space, making it a highly effective base of operations for the Galactic Republic, and because of that problem, the once insignificant agricultural world quickly became a major supply contributor for the Republic's forces in the Outer Rim territories following the war against Zakul. The Empire, under the advisement of Darth Zarian, hired the pirate gang known as the Nova Blades to attack the planet. With the pirates providing a sufficient distraction, the Sith Empire inserted a small subversive task force of their own with the intent to selectively cripple infrastructure and sabotage the Republic's military response to the pirate threat. With the Nova Blades' invasion of Dantooine being swift and surprising, taking the Republic garrison completely by surprise, the Sith Empire under Malgus' leadership of the operation succeeded in the covert infiltration of Dantween. Darth Malgus and Darth Krovos were put in charge of an operation to destroy the advanced Republic shipyard on Corellia, known as the Meridian Complex, which had the capability to turn the war in the Republic's favor. Malgus and Krovos assembled a massive armada, comprising of the majority of the Sith Empire's entire navy, as well as Darth Nox's silencer fleet, now commanded by Moff Pyron, and the last of the destroyers outfitted with Isotope 5, plus an additional group of fuel ships, so that the fleet could proceed to Corellia without stopping. Malgus learned that the Republic fleet did not include any fuel ships, and planned to destroy Republic reinforcements that fueled on allied or neutral worlds before those fleets could be used to ambush the Imperial fleet on Corellia. The first target was Onderon, a known Republic world, and Darth Savik, Darth Melora's replacement on the Dark Council, was in charge of the operation. The second target was Mekshar, a world filled with criminal elements run by Hutbreaker, who decided to hold an auction of the five leaders on whether or not to sell fuel to the Republic as such Darth Shah was placed in charge of the operation due to her prior knowledge of the criminal underworld, aided by the Empire's longtime allies, the Brothers. Darth Malgus battled Tau Edaya and her allies until an explosion occurred that knocked both combatants away from one another. Darth Malgus was recovered and taken to the doctor and medical droid that had placed Malgus under the control of Empress Asina, and now Emperor Valron, who learned that Malgus had used his lightsaber to destroy the control chip. Malgus awoke, ignited his lightsaber, and demanded the medical droid and a ship. While en route to an unknown destination, Darth Malgus fell asleep and experienced a vision where he was on a Sith cruiser, defeated and wounded after fighting off Imperials and Sith, and then being cornered by a Sith warrior, Darth Krovos, and Emperor Valron. Yelling out that he would not return, Vauron subjected him to force lightning many times. All the while, Malgus continued to state that he would not return. A final blow from Vauron woke Malgus up from his slumber in a frightened state. The medical droid came to Malgus and informed him that his visions and mental state were getting worse, and the droid stated that it had no idea how to remove such a psychological effect on him. Thinking for a while, Malgus remembered that he knew of one such technique and ordered the droid to set course for Dantween. Darth Malgus and the medical droid made their way to the Jedi Enclave ruins on Dantooine, and upon arriving at a conjunction, Malgus abandoned the droid and proceeded further into the ruins. Coming upon a sealed door, Malgus cut his way through with his lightsaber and acquired a relic belonging to Darth Null, an ancient Sith Lord whose records vanished from history. Prior to leaving, Malgus left behind an echo to deploy his trap if anyone he forged strong bonds with came in search of him alongside the Alliance commander. At some point, Malgus travelled to the Temple of Null on Elom to retrieve a special holocron, but he soon found that both the Sith Empire and Jedi Order had beaten him to it, as two Jedi and a Sith warrior were dueling for the holocron that was inside a machine within the temple. After the two Jedi gained the upper hand and wounded the Sith warrior, Malgus, to their surprise, suddenly appeared and stabbed their opponent from behind with his lightsaber, 
with the Sith condemning him as a traitor before succumbing to his wounds. With the warrior dispatched, Malgus quickly stood off against the Jedi Master, Denom Orr, while his Padawan, Sahar Katin, went to retrieve the holocron and destroy the machine. To stop her, the Sith renegade unleashed a barrage of force lightning at the young Padawan, but she managed to dodge it and made it to the machine, leaving Malgus to briefly duel with Master Orr, with the Jedi Master holding his own, despite Malgus's superior strength and aggressive fighting style. As the two fought, however, Sahar inadvertently activated the machine and began experiencing visions of her past as massive energy fields began to surround both her and the machine. Before the field could completely cover them, however, Orr was able to retreat behind it, cutting Malgus off from both it and the holocron they sought. Despite this, Katine did not fulfill her master's orders of destroying the machine and its records, instead becoming entranced by it and the visions it was showing her. During this time, Malgus was able to sense the Padawan's past, where she was taken away from her home and her brother as a child by Orr to train as a Jedi. Malgus told Saha that this was how the Jedi and Sith maintained control of their respective orders, leaving behind many young that they didn't deem worthy of using the Force to fend for themselves, and accusing the Jedi's actions of being an attempt at playing God. As Malgus's words began to affect her, or, to the Sith's fury, used the Force to destroy the machine and free his Padawan of its control, while also slamming and pinning Malgus to the walls of the temple with a piece of the device's stone debris. Though injured and trapped, the Sith Lord survived and watched as Saha retrieved the holocron, which remained intact. Unfortunately, as Saha began to argue with her master over the revelations of her vision, Malgus revealed to her that the machine Orr destroyed was meant to find individuals that the Jedi deemed unworthy of training, resulting in Orr attempting to forcibly retrieve and destroy the holocron from her, leading to a brief struggle between them. As Sahar and Orr fought for the holocron, Malgus assured her that if she gave it to him, they could still find her brother together. When Orr attempted to reason with his Padawan, however, Malgus used the Force to entangle him in a series of loose cables from the destroyed device before freeing himself from the rubble. Once freed, the renegade Sith retrieved his lightsaber as he levitated the helpless Jedi to his position, forcing Sahar to watch in horror as he bisected her master before her eyes. As the Sahar regained her senses, Malgus grabbed the lightsaber of his recent victim and dueled her for the holocron. The two engaged in a furious clash, with Sahar proving to a formidable opponent for Malgus as she attempted to avenge her fallen master, managing to hold her own against the renegade and disarming him of Orr's lightsaber. Despite this, Malgus was soon able to gain the upper hand, using the force to push her back and collapse the ceiling of the temple, allowing him to snatch the holocron from her as she struggled to use the force to shield herself from the large amounts of rubble falling upon her. As Malgus left the Padawan to her own fate, he claimed that she needed to break free of her cage if she was ready, urging her to forge her own destiny. While the Empire and Republic were occupied on Manan, Darth Malgus managed to complete his hidden goal and wait for the inevitable arrival of the Alliance commander, who, alongside Lana Benico and their reinforcements, defeated the rogue Sith Lord and imprisoned him in a special prison designed to hold someone as powerful as him. While imprisoned and awaiting interrogation, Malgus mused at the idea that the Alliance commander thought that the ordeal was over and revealed to them that he discovered a path to power that was concealed by thrones and hidden by councils. Meanwhile, leaving the holocron he found in Nul's temple to be found by Sahar Katin. Malgus then proclaimed that he saw a vision of a galaxy in flames and that what he had started would not end with him as this was merely the beginning. Malgus' presence also continued to haunt Saha Katin in the form of visions. Sometime later, Darth Malgus was visited by the Alliance commander in his prison on Carrick Station with questions regarding the former's interest in a child of the Emperor to which Malgus gave no reply retorting that the commander was a fool 
and that everything they knew about Darth Null was a lie. Malgus then proceeded to explain the true origins of the mysterious Sith. When asked why he would divulge this information, Malgus stated that it did not matter, as not only would Null's secrets not have stayed buried for long, but his plans were already in motion and could not be stopped. As Malgus struggled in an attempt to disrupt the stasis field which imprisoned him, the commander stated that they would stop whatever had been started and left the room. After the showdown on Runuk, Darth Malgus was once again met with the Alliance commander to discuss a key discovery about Darth Null, which Malgus claimed that there isn't any secret of Null that he was not aware of, and the commander would have eventually learned them. The commander questioned the partnership between Malgus and Heta Cole. Malgus claims that his designs were beyond Heta Cole and her petty war. He further added that the Mandalorians are useless since they are now fractured, and continuously struggle to decide who they are. Malgus then disrupted the prison force field and declared that he would tear apart the corrupt systems that allow weakness to infect the galaxy and that he will burn down all of their failing legacies to see who embraces the flame. Thousands of years later, the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Bane, wrote about Darth Malgus in the book The Rule of Two. The Sith Lord Darth Sidious eventually obtained some surviving excerpts of Malgus's journals from an antiquities dealer and bound them into his Book of Sith, an anthology of Sith historical writings. Sidious found Malgus's military abilities and strength in the dark side impressive, and his apprentice Darth Vader later studied Malgus's writings and noted a degree of similarity between himself and the ancient Sith Lord. Along with Vitiot, Malgus was seen as being perhaps one of the most powerful Sith Lords in history in terms of his sheer strength, might and influence. Darth Malgus was an exceptionally talented duelist and specialised in using rage and brute strength to defeat his opponents. Aside from his overwhelming physical strength, which served him well not only in lightsaber duels but also in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Malgus also often performed acrobatics to increase his effectiveness in lightsaber combat. His speed was such that a normal human found it difficult to watch his movements in his duels. Darth Malgus utilized a variety of force powers during the sacking of Coruscant to defeat many Jedi and Republic soldiers who stood in his path, including saber throw, force push, choke, jump, speed, and lightning. Malgus used his emotions, such as anger and distaste of others, to fuel his power of the dark side. Malgus demonstrated the skill and power to handle multiple opponents simultaneously without much effort. In one instance, Malgus unleashed a powerful blast of Force Lightning and killed three Jedi with it. Malgus himself could tolerate Force Lightning attacks. During his duel with Lord Adras, Malgus strode through the barrage of the Force Lightning from his opponent using his lightsaber and fingers as conduit and redirected it back towards his opponent to knock him off his feet. He perfected his application of force lightning to a degree from which he could unleash a force maelstrom. During the... Malgus could also hide his presence in the force. Malgus was so strong in the force that it took various force users to immobilize him on Elom. One question that seems to always have different answers is, how did Malgus die? Some will tell you he died of old age, in battle, or that he is still alive but frozen in carbonite. From the wiki fandom we learn that in the year 46 BBY, a Galactic Republic scouting mission sanctioned by Chancellor Valorum stumbled upon the 65-year-old, not including his time frozen in carbonite as he has been frozen for 3,500 years, Malgus's frozen body in a long-abandoned Infinite Empire vessel in the Unknown Regions. Not knowing who he was, the scout defrosted him, unleashing Malgus into the galaxy once more. This concludes the story of Darth Malgus, and I leave the end of his life to your interpretation. But what do you think of Malgus and his story? If you enjoyed the video, please tell me your favourite part in the comments. As always, my students, thank you for watching, and may the Force be with you. Have a great day.